synchronizing the various activities that takes place in different departments inside an organization we call it as coordination you are dealing with different perception inside the organization in order to coordinate their activities towards the common organizational goal this is called differential perception top level manager should direct the middle level middle level should direct the supervisory and get the work done so this is the flow of authority from top to bottom this is principle of scalar chain Hello everyone this is Purna Chandra faculty department of commerce and management vidyashram so we are dealing with the subject management principles and practice and we are starting the final unit that is unit 5 and today will be your first session in unit 5 so the name of the last unit is coordinating and controlling we will see what we are discussing today so today's agenda is basically what is coordination characteristics of coordination and there are eight different principles of coordination which you people will be understanding so after that we also understand what is controlling what are the different steps in controlling and various techniques of controlling as well as modern techniques of managerial controlling so we will start one by one so the first one is meaning of coordination so coordination is nothing but synchronizing the various activities that takes place within an organization so here coordination is orderly arrangement of group efforts to provide unity of action in pursuit of common goal so here the common goal of the organization is to make profit so in order to make profit they will have to produce and sell a product or service so there are different departments like finance department marketing department and production department so there should be coordination between these departments so that the common goal is achieved so this is what we call coordination that is synchronizing the various activities that takes place in different departments inside an organization we call it as coordination so next what are the different characteristics of coordination group efforts so obviously coordination is a group efforts because you are dealing with different groups which are working in different departments inside the organization like finance marketing sales production hr so it is a group effort then unity of action obviously for ensuring coordination inside the organization there should be unity among the workers employees subordinates managers so that they work in a coordinated way and they achieve the common goal of the organization this is called unity of action then continuous process just like your functions of management like planning organizing staffing directing controlling coordination is also a continuous process that is if you stop coordinating things will go wrong and you cannot attain optimum utilization of resources that is efficiency and effectiveness and ultimately your product will not be of good quality and you will have to face loss if you stop coordinating the activities that is continuous process then pervasive function that is wherever business activities takes place there should be management wherever management is there that is management is pervasive similarly here wherever management takes place there should be coordination for efficiency and effectiveness then responsibility of all managers yes coordination is the responsibility of all managers inside an organization so that they achieve the common goal of the organization so each manager just like planning organizing staffing directing and controlling they should also consider coordination as their responsibility next deliberate function that is the manager should deliberately ensure that all the activities are taking place in a coordinated way so you should frame rules and regulations or policies so that coordination is ensured in the organization this is deliberate function so next we go for importance of coordination so in importance of coordination unity of action that is there should be unity of action towards a common 
objective that is organization goals increase in efficiency and economy that is efficiency minimum cost maximum benefit limited resources maximum output and quality output that is also an importance development of employees so to ensure quality products you need skilled employees so skilled employees you provide them training and you develop them so that is development of employees differential perception what does this mean differential perception basically means people who are working in finance department their perception is different people who are working in production their perception is different so what you are doing you are dealing with different perception inside the organization in order to coordinate their activities towards the common organizational goal this is called differential perception survival of the organization so for the organization to survive it has to make profit to make profit they have to come out with quality products and quality products is a result of good coordination this is called survival of the organization next we go for accomplishment of objectives that is your objective is to make 1 crore profit so to achieve that objectives you might have to produce 1000 products and sell to produce 1000 products you need coordination that is accomplishment of objectives next end of conflicts so if there is any conflicts between workers managers or different departments so what coordination does is it ends the conflicts and it allows the workers to work with cooperation and in harmony that is end of conflicts facilitates motivation that is by coordinating you are motivating the people inside the organization the employees the middle level managers etc so next unity in diversity so organization means thousands of people come to work from various backgrounds so what they have to do they have to work in unity that is unity in diversity integrates the efforts of different departments that is whatever different departments are doing what coordination is doing is it integrates or synchronizes the effort of different departments inside the organization so this is importance of coordination so next we are starting the principles of coordination the first principle is principle of early stage that is you should start the coordination at an early stage so for example there is a production process going on so you should make sure that the coordination is ensured in the early stage that is when the activities begin in the floor or shop floor level next principle of continuity there should be continuity of coordination if you stop coordinating at any point of time you will have to face loss because the product quality will come down as a result of lack of continuity of coordination principle of direct contact that is when you are directing the people when you are involved in the coordination process you being a manager should have direct communication with the employees that is principle of direct contact that is you should go to them and speak to them on the face for example they are making any kind of mistakes you have to rectify them in a direct manner that is you should go approach them and communicate them and rectify their mistakes next principle of reciprocal relations that is what decisions you are making it might have reciprocal relations so what is the meaning of this for example there is a production department and there is a marketing department here so the production department has not produced the product but here what the marketing department has done it has come out with an advertisement and the advertisement is broadcasted in the television now the production is only not over now the advertisement has been broadcasted now what happens here is people will come to the store and ask for the product but the product is not there this will have a negative impact on the business so this is called principle of reciprocal relations that is you should make sure that all the activities are synchronized and integrated in a coordinated way so here what has happened what the top level manager has to do he should make sure that the production is done and then only go for advertising so this is called principle of reciprocal relations that is one directions might lead to complications in future so you should direct them in such a way that there is coordination among different departments here like production and marketing so next we go for the fifth one principle of effective communication that is 
you being a manager should communicate well and employees who are working in your organization should understand what you are communicating to him or her. Suppose you being a manager, you are not communicating well and there is no clarity regarding what you are speaking, then you cannot achieve coordination. To achieve coordination, you should be an effective person or effective person who communicates well. That is the meaning. Next principle of mutual respect. So that is both the workers or employees should have respect to the managers and the manager should also have respect to the workers or employees. This is called principle of mutual respect. Principle of clarity of objectives that is whatever activities you are doing to achieve the objective, there should be clarity regarding the objective like how many products do we have to manufacture. So there should be clarity. If there is no clarity, obviously what happens is there will be confusion and repetition of work which you don't want. Then principle of scalar chain that is the flow of authority from top to bottom that is top level manager should direct the middle level, middle level should direct the supervisory and get the work done. So this is the flow of authority from top to bottom. This is principle of scalar chain. So this is regarding the principles of coordination. So next we go for controlling. So we will understand what is controlling basically. Controlling is the measurement of accomplishment against the standard. It is also the correction of deviation to assure attainment of objectives according to plans. That is, you set a standard and you allow the workers or employees to work and after that you compare the standard with the actual performance and see whether things are going right. For example, your standard is 100 units per day. So this is your standard. So at the end of the day, you go and measure whether they have produced 100 units. So if it is 100, it is fine. Suppose they have produced only 80 units. So here there is a deviation. Something has gone wrong. So you interfere and you rectify the mistakes that has happened. This is called controlling. So here there might be two reasons for this deviation. Workers are not working well or there is a problem with the machinery. So you find out what is the problem you and get it repaired. If it is a problem with the workers, you give them training, they work well and they meet the actual performance of 100 units. Suppose if it is a problem with the machinery, you repair it or you get it replaced. This is called controlling. So next, steps in controlling as I already explained, establishment of standards, you set one standard for example 100 units like already I have told. Then measurement of actual performance. Then you measure the actual performance with the standard. If it is matching, it is fine. Suppose there is deviation, you compare the actual with the standard performance. If it is the same, okay. If there is any deviation, then what you do is you take corrective actions. That is you train the em employees to do well or you repair the machine or you replace the machine. This is the steps in controlling. So next, Techniques of control. So there are various techniques of control which we will be understanding. First one is personal observation. It is done just by observing or supervising the work that is taking place in the business premises. That is just by observation by your naked eyes, you are finding faults in the workers in the workplace. So you go to them, approach them directly and you get it rectified. This is personal observation that is so you are observing with your naked eye that is personal observation. Then statistical reports, controlling is done based on statistical reports like averages, percentages and ratios that is you refer previous year averages, profit average, cost average, sales average etc. So based on that you can control. You match the previous year statistical reports with the present year and you get to know what is the reality so that you can control and you can also get to know the percentage increase in profit, percentage decrease in cost. So all the statistical report will provide you the percentage data. You can make use of them to control and also ratios profit has increased by 1 is to 2, the cost has increased by 1 is to 3. So based on ratios also you can control just by observing these statistical reports you can control your present day activities. So next it is break even analysis. Break even analysis includes the study of relationship between cost, volume and profits. So what is the basic meaning of break even? Break even means no loss, no profit. That is you are not making loss at the same time you are not making profit. Whatever you have put in you are getting back. 
but there is no profit or loss. That is break even analysis. So based on break even point, that is a point where there is no loss or no profit, you can make use of that point reference and you can control the activities. That is break even analysis. The next one is your budgetary control. So what is the meaning of this? It includes formation of budgets based on operations that are necessary to be performed. So what is the basic meaning of this? So you make a sales budget, a production budget and based on this budget, you carry out the operations. For example, your production budget is so your production budget for this year is 1 lakh. So you carry on the activities in such a way that it will not exceed 1 lakh or it will fall within 1 lakh. This is called budgetary control. So next we go for return on investment. So these are the modern techniques. So till now what we discussed was just techniques of controlling. So now there are modern techniques of controlling which will be understanding. Return on investment can be used to measure the overall performance. That is whatever you are invested, there should be a return on that. For example, 10%, 20%. For example, your investment is So your investment is for example 10,000 for a particular unit of product. So what you have to do is more than 10,000 that is 10% 10 of 10,000 that is 1,000 minimum you should earn more that is 1,000. So the total here is 11,000. So this was your investment of 10,000 and you want a return on investment of 10% on 10,000 that is 1,000. So total is 11,000. So to make a return on investment of 10% on 10,000, you will have to make 11,000. That is the meaning of return on investment. So you control your activity in such a way that you reach this sales target of 11,000. That is the meaning. And then ratio analysis. Obviously, as we have already discussed, ratio is the arithmetical relationship between two figures. That is, whether it is sales ratio or cost ratio, volume ratio or your profit ratio, revenue ratio, whatever it might be. You can use it for controlling. That is ratio analysis. Next, responsibility accounting. What is the meaning of responsibility accounting? So, it helps in planning the cost. So, before you do any activities, you have to plan the cost. Otherwise, what happens if there is no clarity regarding the cost? Obviously, the cost will incur in a very large amount. So, you, you plan the cost earlier. It includes the preparation of monthly and annual budget. That is, you make cost budget or annual cost which you are ready to spend and you control the activities in such a way that all the activities takes place within that monthly and annual budget. This is called responsibility accounting. That is, you are taking responsibility for the cost and you are carrying out operations as per the cost that has been decided earlier. This is called responsibility accounting. So next we go for management audit. So what is management audit? So we will understand. It refers to a systematic appraisal of overall performance of the management. That is, you want to know whether your management that is the managers are working well or not. So you come out with management audit. So here what happens is the purpose to review the efficiency and effectiveness of management and improve its performance in future. That is it wants to check whether the managers are really effective and efficient. Whether they are into optimum utilization of resources, whether they are using limited resources and coming out with maximum output. So you want to know what is actually happening. So you come out with management audit. So the main reason is to see whether they are working with efficiency, whether they are effective and if they are not, then you will have to improve them. So that is the main reason why you are coming out with management audit. So aims to identify management weakness and recommend ways to rectify these weakness. Suppose after management audit, you come to know that the managers are not effective. They are not efficient. 
So what happens here? You come to know what is their weakness. That is, you can know what is their weakness. So you can come with different training platforms where their weakness can be rectified so that they work with effectiveness and efficiency. This is called management audit. So next we go for PERT and CPM. So the full form of PERT is Programmed Evaluation and Review Technique. So and the full form of CPM is Critical Path Method. So basically these are the two modern techniques which gives a mapping for the activities. That is for example if there are five processes these give a network to those activities. So for example, there is process 1 here. So, and here there is a process 2. So, and here there is a process 3. And here there is a process 4. So, these are the 4 processes for a particular raw material to be converted into a product. So, here the raw materials has been issued to process 1. So, from process 1, it has to go to process 2. It cannot directly go to process 4. From here, it has to go to process 3. And after process 3, it goes to process 4. And here is your output. This is the final product. So, what PERT and CPM gives is, it gives this route mapping for the activities inside the organization. So, here it helps in planning. So, before giving a mapping, there has to be a plan for these processes, then scheduling that is what is the time schedule. For example, there is a raw material issue to process 1. So it has to be in process 1 for example 10 minutes. So this is process 1. Then it goes to process 2 and in process 2 for example it has to be 20 minutes. Then after that it goes to process 3 and in process 3 it might be 30 minutes. So then it goes to process 4, there it might be 45 minutes. So this is called scheduling. So it is scheduling the process. Then implementing. So once it is scheduled, it also helps to implement this process chart. This is called PERT and CPM. This is also a modern technique of managerial control. So next we go for just-in-time inventory system. So what is the meaning of just-in-time inventory system? So we will start. It is a management strategy that aligns raw material orders from suppliers directly with production schedules. That is, you are starting your activities at 11 o'clock in the morning in the factory. So just in time to be used, the raw materials are supplied or transported to your factory. That means there is no warehouse. There is no go down. So your activities are starting at 11 means 10.50 or 10.55 your raw material should be available. This is called just in time inventory system. Helps increase efficiency and decrease waste. That is there will be more efficiency. You, you need not keep the raw materials for many days in your warehouse. So that might also lead to waste. So when you are getting raw materials at the point of production. What happens is it increases efficiency and decrease waste. This is just in time inventory system. So next just in time inventory system. It also reduces inventory cost by reducing the following waste. That is inventory cost. That is you don't have to keep a separate go down or warehouse for your raw materials. You can just order just in time and just in time the materials will be produced and you can start your operations. So there are different kinds of waste which you can eliminate. Waste due to overproduction, there may be certain scenario where you make use of more raw materials and produce more products. That is a waste. Then waste of time. Obviously there is a waste of time loading all the raw materials to a warehouse. Again getting them from the warehouse to the workplace. That is also a waste of time which can be eliminated by JIT. Then transportation waste. That is to transport huge amount of raw materials from your warehouse to your production. That is also a problem. That is also waste. Processing waste. Processing waste also comes because you are making use of more raw materials because you have got ample of raw materials in your warehouse. So there is processing waste and inventory waste in your store or in your go down. Lot of raw materials they might get expired because you have kept them for a longer period of time. 
so you can eliminate that in jit waste of motion that is from the supplier you move to the warehouse from the warehouse you move again to your factory so you can eliminate that waste of motion waste from product defects what is the meaning of this suppose you have kept some raw materials in your warehouse which has expired and just to compensate you are making use of that expired raw materials to produce a product so when you are making use of substandard or expired raw materials what happens there is product defects so you can eliminate this so all these wastes can be eliminated through jit that is just in time inventory system which produces raw material at the time of processing this is the meaning of jit now we go for advantages of jit so the first advantage is less space needed so there is less space needed so you don't have to have a warehouse at the time of processing the raw materials are supplied waste reduction so for example you have kept a lot of raw materials in your warehouse so if they are expired then it is a waste now you are getting raw materials on time so what happens the waste is reduced then small investments that is you don't have to invest on raw materials on a bulk and also you don't have to invest on warehouse that is small investments disadvantages of jit risk of running out of stock so for example you have ordered on jit that you want raw materials at 11 o'clock in the morning due to some reason they don't turn up then what happens you run out of stock you don't have stock the workers are there the machines are ready but you don't have stock because the jit people they are not able to provide raw materials on time so that is a disadvantage lack of control over time frame so basically what happens is you might have planned to start your activities at 11 o'clock so by 11 everything should be ready that is the workers or your machines and also the raw materials so here for example there is a lack of control over time frame that is you are not able to start your activities at 11 due to some reason you will have to start at 12 then what happens the raw materials will be provided by 11 and you cannot store those raw materials there is no space so this is lack of control over time frame more planning required obviously there should be more planning required for example 11 o'clock you are operating the raw materials has been provided by jit inventory system they have provided raw materials on time but your workers are not present what happens here this is a lack of planning so you have told your workers to come by 12 but the raw materials have reached your factory by 11 so for one hour duration you will have to safeguard those raw materials so that is a problem so these are the disadvantages of jit so next we go for the topic essentials of effective control system so these are the basic essentials every control system should possess the first one is focus on objectives and needs that is whatever objective is there you have to focus on it in a deliberate manner for example your objective is to make one crore profit for that you will have to produce 10,000 products and sell so you should concentrate or focus on those objectives first next forward looking obviously you should have the foresight you should know in what all different ways the problems might occur and you should know the way to deal with them you should know how to control those things that might arise in future that is forward looking then prompt so prompt is basically controlling is nothing but measurement of standard with actual so when you are reporting the actual you should be prompt for example your standard as I have already told is 100. So, now what happens? They have produced only 80. So, when you are reporting this actual performance, you should be prompt, you should be honest. So, for example, middle level manager, for example, is a production manager. Just to safeguard the employees, he will lie to the top level managers that they have produced the standard of 100 when they have only produced this. So, here the problem starts. So, there should be prompt in reporting of the actual performance that is 80. Next, flexibility. The controlling system should be flexible enough to deal with all sort of problems or situations that might occur in future. That is certain uncertain things might happen and the controlling system should be ready for that and they should be flexible to adjust according to the future course of 
things that they might have to face then motivating obviously they should motivate now for example as i've already told the workers have produced only 80 when the standard is 100 that means you cannot go and uh, shout at your workers in a very arrogant manner you should go to them rectify their mistakes and you should motivate them so only when you motivate them then they can meet the standard of this 100 units then simple so whatever rules or whatever system or whatever objectives that you are implementing it should be simple and clear the employees or the middle level managers they should understand it and it should be very simple to understand and simple to execute so when it is very simple to execute it becomes a very effective control system so this is the essentials of effective control system so in the next class what we'll be understanding is managerial ethics business social responsibility as well as green management that's all for today's class thank you